All right, guys, why is it super important to check total external static pressure on a piece of equipment on a PM or if it's the first time you've encountered that piece of equipment? Stay tuned, watch the video. I'll show you how to check total external static pressure on this furnace and at the end I'll tell you why it's really important to check this on furnaces and air handlers. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Gary McCready from HVAC know -It -All. So we're at the Master Group Vaughn Distribution Center in the training room and what we're gonna do here is learn how to check external static pressure on this furnace using the Y-Jack mantle and some static pressure tips. In order to complete this task, we're gonna need a dual port manometer, two static pressure tips, and some tubing that connects everything together. In order to check total external static pressure of a furnace, we need to install a static pressure tip after the filter, but before the coil. And I'm gonna show you how to do that without drilling holes in the cabinet. If we pull the cover off this furnace, this particular machine is asking for a maximum external static pressure of 0.5 inches water column. Static pressure tips are closed on the end, but open on the sides, as you can see here. And what happens as that fan starts up, we create a ballooning effect in the ductwork, and that pressure inserts itself into those little holes back to the manometer so we can read it. So what I've done here is removed the high limit switch. That gives us access to the top of the cabinet where we can insert one of our static pressure tips. Now, each static pressure tip comes with an arrow and that indicates the direction that the tip is pointing. So I've installed the first static pressure tip with the arrow pointing down, which means the tip is pointing downwards. I've always been in a habit of doing it this way. You can point it upwards as well. I don't think it really matters because our air is captured on the side of the device, not on the tip itself. So for my second tip, I have it installed in the same hole that the control wire comes through and you can see the tip pointing downwards, capturing airflow that's coming up and that is installed after the filter. Next, we're gonna to wanna to connect our tubing from each static pressure tip to the dual port manometer. And as you can see, the pressure tips are color coded and they are also color coded on the manometer as well. Now with the Y-Jack mantle turned on, the next step is to go into the Y-Jack view app and zero out the manifold. We are now in the Y-Jack view app and what we have to do is once our device is seen by the app, we have to hit the gear icon and zero out our pressures. Our cooling has now started up. Our fan has ramped up as well. We're using an ECM motor in this particular furnace and our fan has ramped up to full speed. At the moment, we're currently hovering around what the nameplate is asking for, for external static pressure of this machine. So we have our total external static pressure displayed here on the screen. If we want to see independent return and supply readings, we can do that just by removing a tube. So if we want to see the return side, all we have to do is remove the supply side tubing and we have a reading of 0.23 inches water column. If you want to see the supply side pressure, remove the return tubing, and we have a reading of 0 0.029 inches water column. And when we reapply the tubing, we have our total external static pressure once again. So why do we go through all these steps to check total external static pressure? One reason, airflow. We want to make sure our airflow is on point. If we are at our rated amount of static pressure, according to the nameplate, we are going to be happy. We're going to probably be comfortable within a home. We're going to have the right amount of airflow across the air handler to make it happy. If we're too high on that scale, we could have airflow issues like closed dampers, an unbalanced system, undersized ductwork. We could have issues with our blower motor prematurely failing. Same thing if we come under that spec. If we come under that spec, we're gonna reveal airflow issues. So you need to check this on a maintenance. The first visit is most important. And then when we check it, we know if we're good or if we're too high, if we're too low, we need to investigate further and find out why. Fixing it is gonna make the client and the home more comfortable and it's gonna make the system happier as it's running. That's the video guys, happy HVACing.